So the thing we're working towards is we're using the Go programming language to do web development and we want to uh, be able to create session and create state because the web is stateless. So we have round trip cycles between a request and response and then that's it. The connection between the client and the server is severed. So that connection isn't maintained open like a telephone call where we could go back and forth over and over and over. It's a, it's a ping and a pong, right? So the request comes in, the response goes back, and then that's done. And so how do we maintain state? That's the question. And so it, we could draw a little analogy here. We need a unique identifier. And that unique identifier is going to allow us to identify who's making the request. Right? And so the analogy that we'll draw is in the real world. And I'm walking across campus and I see people, I see a familiar face, and that face is a unique identifier. Each of you has a unique face. So I see each of you on campus and that unique identifier is given to me, my mind, the server, and I'm able to then take that unique identifier, which is your face, and access a bunch of data that I have stored in the server. And that data could be like, you know, conversations we've had, which class of mine you are in, and I know all the stuff about you, so I could say, hey, how's your dog? How are your kids? Or whatever. But the unique identifier of your look, humans can use that to access more information stored in their own servers, their heads. And it's going to be the same way on the web. <laughs> right? We'll get a request. That request will have a unique identifier. And then that unique identifier will take that and we'll be able to look up on our server information about that individual. And so even though between each communication the connection severed, when the next communication comes in, if a unique identifier is passed to it, we know who that's coming from. And we could look things up based upon that on the server. It's kind of humanistic when it's presented that way. Kind of interesting, huh? But it's not. It's totally hardcore engineering. <laughs> it's cold and ruthless. No, machinery. The analogy is Does the analogy help? Yeah. Cool. Yeah. I mean, that's what we naturally do as humans. And uh, so we could store that unique ID in a cookie because every time a client makes a request to our server, if there's a cookie on their machine, they'll send that ID with it. And we could also store that ID in every single URL of our website. So we could dynamically add to every URL a variable, right, which is that unique ID. And then even if the person doesn't accept cookies, every time they click a link within our site to some other place within our site, that link is coming back to our server and appended to it are, you know, the variables at the end of the URL, anatomy, anatomy URL. Right, and uh, anatomy of a URL, dope bud, dope bud, it's a weird website. And, uh, and so here are those parameters, right? So we could just have some session ID back there. And if it's all HTTPS, that's totally secure. Aside from shoulder surfers walking by and snapping a picture of somebody's browser, maybe, you know, then going and entering those exact numbers and hijacking the session that way because then they would have sent us that person's unique ID. But when it's going across the wide open field of the internet, HTTPS, it's all secure. The cookie or the URL. So that's a secure session. You guys get that? Is the unique ID based on the IP address? How, how do they decide what that unique ID is? We just make up a unique ID. And so in programming there's a thing called a universally unique ID. And you can go to Wikipedia UUID wiki, I just misspelled that, but here's universally unique identifier and when you make up a universally unique identifier if you generate 1 billion UUIDs every second for the next 100 years, so a billion every second for 100 years, the probability of creating just one duplicate is about 50 percent. So you know for all intents and purposes it's pretty much unique. So that's why they call it a universally unique ID. 
and uh, and you can see here um, it's 128 bit value. Here's an example of one hexadecimal with dashes, and um, there is something else in here where it's um, not it's practically unique, not guaranteed unique, right? Because there's that one chance, you know, in 100 years, a billion a second that you have 50% probability you'll come across the same one. I think we should start selling lottery tickets. I'm sure there's laws against it. Okay, so you guys get it? We're just making the person send us a unique ID. And then our server, we've stored that somewhere. So the first thing is how do we get a unique ID? Go doc, third party packages, UUID. When Caleb Doxy uh, painfully taught me web, pro web programming. <laughs> I think it's painful for him and it's painful for me because I am an economist and a business graduate MBA by training and uh, came to programming after the age of 25 which means that my brain doesn't learn languages as quickly as somebody under the age of 25. But I was fortunate enough to uh, write a grant which allowed us to create a web boot camp and I was fortunate enough to hire Caleb Doxy, and it was kind of like a white belt hiring a ninja to come kick his butt for four weeks and tell him he knows nothing. But he showed me the path, and so I've done some diligent work since then to try to continue bringing myself up to speed and to help others come up to speed. So I'm grateful for that too. Talking about Steve before Thanksgiving, we're talking about what we're grateful for in class. I'm grateful for that. But when Caleb Doxy came and whooped my ass with Go programming, uh, he used New 7 Hatch, the UUID for that. Here's another one that has more imports and more stars. And I'm kind of like, there's this Tick Not Han story. I'm just totally on tangents. I hope I haven't scared you off. But there's a Tick Not Han story. And the Tick Not Han story is, um, is uh, that he would take pictures and just look at them. He's a Buddhist monk in Thailand when he's placing orphans and he's just looking at them for five or ten minutes to get the feel of the person. And I'm gonna maybe, but when I look at like this dude here, I think that's a hacker who's gonna try to screw me with bad code. No, I'm kidding. <laughs> I think that's a decent looking dude, right? And uh, when I look at this one, that guy looks like he certainly knows what he's doing, and I want to meet him in person. <laughs> but I'm sure he's a cool dude, too. But um, this guy's like hardcore, and I was looking at some of his repos. Anyhow, go either way. And sorry if I've offended anybody. Um, <laughs> judging a book by its cover gets us all in trouble, doesn't it? So we are in a, a repo of mine, and you could draw your own conclusions, which you will. And that's just the way the human mind works. Totally philosophizing tonight. Here you go, draw your own conclusions. Okay, fair game. We are in Golang Web Dev, and here we have this whole code repo. You know this if you watch my videos. And uh, and we're just kind of freewheeling in zero zero temp right now, which is just kind of like, you know, do stuff. And so we're in zero zero temp forty four zero three. We just did the last video about cookies. So this one we're gonna do about UUIDs. And so instead of storing McLeod's Go class here, we want to stick in a UUID, right? So that's the, that's the game. And so the UUID that we want to use is a GoDoc UUID. I'm going to go with Satori. So you need to go get this package. And, uh, you know, that's one of the commands, the Go commands. And so Control-C, just go get, and I'm going to do a dash U to update it. And I go get that, and it's going and getting that package. Now here's something that screwed me up when I started using these packages. And you're going to see it in action in a section, second, so I'll show you it in action. But pretty much my instinct when you know I bring in a package is, well, I'm going to be using HTTP dot something, right? Here's like from the HTTP package response writer, from HTTP cookie, right? So I'm going to then do a UUID. So the first part of that package is go.uuid. That's kind of weird, so I'll do go.uuid and just hope that my code completion brings it up and I'm like stymied. Didn't do it. And what you have to do is uuid. 
So I need a new UUID. So let's look at how we create it. And there's a couple of UUIDs. I don't know what the difference is between version 1 and 5. Go ask somebody who studied computer science. <laughs> right? But version 4 is the one we use that Caleb taught. And with these other ones, you got to pass in other stuff. And version 4, you don't have to pass in anything. So I like that. <laughs> so that's my answer. How do you like that? Right? We're going to use version 4. New V4 UUID. And uh, if it's good for Caleb, it's good for me. So new v4, and I'm just, and that gives me back a UUID. So I'm going to call it session ID. And uh, colon equals. And UUID new v4. All right, so that's it. And you can see it brought in GitHub Satori Go UUID. Well, what the heck? Why is this one bringing in? You know, why is this one I just put UUID, but up here it's called go.uuid when everything else is pretty much HTTP, HTTP, right? The reason is, is because the folder name, remember this is the path to the folder in this dude's directories on his computer. He's got a folder GitHub, right? He's got a folder, well he, well, he has his repos. But if this was Go Workspace, that's how it's set out, right? And so, which it is. So here, here are his folders. And if we look at this code, it's package UUID. So that's where it gets its identifier, because it's package and then what's in the package. So he, the package name and the folder name aren't matching for him. And that's a convention in Go to match that, but he's not doing that. Strangely enough, new 7 hatch and Satori do the same thing with their UUIDs. Their folder name doesn't match their package name. Don't know why. Right? But Anyhow, so you still just use UUID. You get your ID, right? There's my my session ID, and I'm just going to put it there. So now I have my session ID stored there. And I don't need bar anymore because that was just kind of like, can we change the cookie? So I'm going to get rid of that. So now, right, I've got foo. It asks for a cookie, and there's my cookie. And uh, you know, if I don't have a cookie, it creates one, stores the SSID, you know, and then sets it and then writes my cookie. So let's let's see that run and we could check to make sure. And I guess, you know, what I could do is I could leave bar and in bar I could request my cookie and if it's an error, don't go there. And and uh, and then I could just print out my cookie. And we could see that when I'm at bar I'm getting another one. And I'll print out my C value. Actually, I'm kind of interested to see the string deal. We'll leave it at that. All right, let's watch it run. And I use SID as type string in field value, so I love the compiler. I have to call that method, okay? Because it's like not a string yet, and that makes it a string. We love compiled languages. I'm not saying that sarcastically, even though it sounded like it. So there's localhost, and there's my unique ID. So there's my cookie session with the UUID, right? And up here, and if I go to bar, right, it's still there. And that's uh, 7B9D, 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 7B9D. So no matter where I go, That cookies, every time the client makes a request to the server, it's sending that cookie. The server's grabbing the cookie, getting the unique ID. And then if you go into it, if you open up a new window and then go to that, is it going to create another new unique ID with a new window? No, because that cookie, that's a great question. So I'm going to go here and go to bar. Right, That cookie 7B9D is on this browser connected to this browser so when I make a request to that server from this browser the browser looks do I have a cookie from that domain stored and it says oh here it is so all right because I could go, close my browser I could close what about if you go and, and open up a um, incognito window no because it doesn't send incognito doesn't send cookies all right so there's no cookie there in my incognito window command shift i that's that one. Control shift. There we go. All right? It's a new cookie. 
it did send a cookie, but it didn't it didn't send any of the current cookies. It, well, it did get a cookie because it just hit it as new. I guess. Yeah, I thought it didn't send cookies, but it sent the cookie. That's interesting. Because I'm back. Back in black. All right. So that's uh, that's the first step in creating a session is doing the UUIDs.